everybody. Hi. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> Beautiful Kansas weather. Back light. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry guys, my, my starts are always rough. I've been uh, 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 off the map a bit. Um, I did do a couple videos when I was having ticks, and then I took them down because it was too soon, um, because I hadn't fully researched and done my Sherlock Holmes mystery obsession, solve, gotta solve it thing. So I was just uncomfortable with presenting the information before I knew exactly what was going on and why. I do know now, but that's a video for another time. Um, this video is uh, a autistic catatonia update. Um, as the aforementioned uh, way that I tend to be about mysteries suggests, um, I have, uh, I have uh, made progress um, in my understanding um, of that. It's just a bit of an update. And just to share with you guys a really, really, really cool experience. <laughs> Probably the most incredible, awe-inspiring 30 seconds of my life. Um, I shouldn't say life, you know, of my last couple of years. Uh, crash Course in Lily. Um, if you haven't seen it, go check out my Autistic Catatonia video explains what that is. I will do my best to remember to link it, but let's be honest, I probably won't. Um, but I have autistic catatonia. Um, basically, when I get overwhelmed, uh, it, it's similar to what you would think is an autistic sh shutdown. Um, I, I lose verbal ability, and I lose ability to move normally. Now, I've been doing some research, I had been doing some research on dissociation, because I see it a lot. It comes up on my Tumblr, and uh, it's not something I've been like ever diagnosed with, or, 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 or thought, thought that I had. Um, but I was kind of looking it up, because with my alexithemia and not being able to tell what's what, um, I have to learn the symptomology of stuff to know what's going on and take care of myself. Sorry for my fidgeting. Now you're probably used to it. Uh, so, so, so I looked that up. Um, it's similar to dissociation. It's not exact. Um, the dissociation is sort of the feeling of derealization, of not being present. And what they teach people who have dissociative dis 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 dissociative disorders is um, grounding. And what grounding is, 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 is tuning yourself into your environment. So what they'll do is um, go sense by sense the senses and say, look around your environment. Um, and so, okay, sorry guys, there's mosquitoes. Um, holy crud, sorry, there's an airplane. That's what that looks like. <laughs> um, goodness gracious, I can't edit my videos, guys. So sorry. Um, I suppose I shouldn't apologize for that. Real time, real time sensory defensiveness. You just saw there. Anyway, um, so it's with dissociation. Um, I didn't know much about what it was. I kind of understood it, but I knew kind of what grounding was because, like, in a lot of my therapy, like back, 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 you know, they talk about mindfulness and grounding. So. I, understood like to that extent like but beyond that um 
what I would do when I would start to feel disconnected uh, is um, I would do that. I would go sense by sense because of, you know, because of the way autism is and sensory processing disorder. Um, I knew at least that it was an issue of sensory overload or sensory dysregulation. And so the way I regulate my senses in a time like that is um, I, I go sense by sense and so I'll, I'll tune my eyes in and I will count how many colors I can see kind of just in my general field of view. I'll count how many colors. I will count how many sources of sound um, and I will, I will make sure I'm, I'm touching something. I don't have my little stimmy toy thing that I want to share with you guys. Uh, but I'll make sure that I'm touching something. And so what it is for me, without anybody ever, like, no professional told me this is something that I figured out or that I came up with, is that the way I regulate my sensory system is, is, is uh, grounding myself and tuning my senses in and um, uh, connecting my senses. Because with sensory dysregulation, I think of it as like, a, like they're scattered. My senses are scattered everywhere and I've got to draw them back in. And so what I'll do is I'll do that and I'll ground myself, I'll look, I'll see, I'll touch, but to re-regulate my senses if they're really scattered, um, the, it's about combining. So I will, for example, the one I use is like I will, I've got touch, okay, I've got, and I've got sound, um, so I'll go one, two, three, one, two, three, and it's auditory and tactile, combining those together with one thing. I think you guys get it, if you get it. Um, and that is just my understanding of how the sensory system works and what, what needs to happen to kind of find stasis again in my nervous system. So with the catatonia, um, because it is similar to shutdown or to, to dissociation, um, it is similar that this, this um, because um, at this point, you know, I'm a year and a half in now. Um, with my diagnosis and all the catatonia stuff, uh, uh, it's um, I know that the catatonia is is my uh, uh, worst response um, to things. Um, if my senses are scattered and, and dysregulated, if I'm having a panic attack, whatever else, the way I bring myself back um, and, and try to regulate my senses, it 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 it, it, it stops the catatonia because. What it is, the catatonia is a, a physiological, kind of neurological response to either external stimuli sensory-wise or emotions or like psych psych psychological things that go beyond what your body can handle. And I, um, I used to have a video up about conversion disorder explaining the tics and I will redo that. Um, but basically that's, anyway, before this gets confusing for me, not for you. Um, the, um, it's a physiological response, and so I understand that if like, I'm having a catatonic episode, um, can't speak, can't move, um, my first line of defense is regulating my senses, bringing everything back in instead of it's scattered, you know, gotta walk around, okay, this is my, that's a, that's a dumb analogy, <laughs> that's a dumb analogy, start over. So. All that. I'm so sorry if this gets too long, you guys, but I think that all makes sense thus far. The thing about that is um, I hadn't experienced my, my theory. My theory was that um, because I've told you guys the medication I take is the only thing that can fix catatonia. Once it starts and I start regressing, if I don't take that medication, you know, crap. <laughs> um, but uh, I am not on any medication right now, and uh, that's another story for another day. And um, you know, so I've had to come up with ways to see if it was possible to deal with the catatonia otherwise. And so my theory, theory, was that if I'm in the middle of a full-blown, not full-blown necessarily, catatonic, frozen, literally can't walk, okay, um, is, is to do that sort of grounding technique that I thought of, which I now know is an actual, that's what they teach people to do, is to tune into your environment. But my whole one, two, three, connecting the auditory and the visual and the touch is I tell um, people, if I go catatonic and you need to help me, what you do is you 
show me your hand first because I am touch averse and so I need to see it to be prepared for it to tap and count doesn't matter and so I've got touch I've got auditory and um, and 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 visual I will watch them tap so three sentences sense sen I almost said sentences three senses um, that are being pulled together by one source one three that makes sense to you guys um, that's a very very kind of foundational concept of sensory regulation that I'm, I'm taking senses that are scattered pulling them in with one source and it's I knew that it would work um, or at least that was I didn't know that it would work that was my theory you know scientific theory theory test theory test but obviously I'm not gonna put myself in a position to be catatonic on purpose so I am living with a family now um, and it's great and uh, so we, we sat down and I um, explaining you know the things I struggle with how to recognize a meltdown before it happens because I don't know you know and, and what to do to help me and um, uh, and then I also told them about the catatonia like I haven't had a full-blown catatonia thing since leaving my parents house and you know that's largely due to the dramatic drastic decrease in my stress level because it was a stressful environment for me um, but so you know I told her like I haven't had one yet but if that does happen my theory is and then I told her about the sort of grounding senses thing today um, I've had a rough few days rough um, multiple panic attacks a day just Processing a lot of emotions. Um, I'm in a house with six people now, which I haven't been in years. So it's just a lot of recalibration for staying regulated and that kind of thing. And um, started having a panic attack and reaching meltdown. I did have some head hitting. Um, and so I just went outside because there's not really a place for me to go in the house, which is fine, but I went outside kind of got the panic attacks to stop, got, you know, kind of avo 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 avoided the meltdown, and, uh, you know, I'm standing there, and lo and behold, I can't move, and I was just like, well, Catatonia, my old enemy, welcome back, so I texted her, and I was like, hey, awkward thing, I am stuck in the backyard, <laughs> and I had, at this point, forgotten, I mean, it's easy to not remember or think about things when I'm in a catatonic state, but it just, it didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind about what I had told her to do in that place, and she remembered it, and she came out, she showed me her hand, and she, like, uh, I don't remember exactly, because I wasn't exactly present, but I'm pretty sure she was just very sensitive to not ask me a bunch of questions, like, she'd say, oh, are you okay, because obviously I'm not, um, and she just did that, and she kind of showed me her hand toward me, and I, I nodded at her, like, yes, it's okay to touch me. And she did that, she touched my arm. She was like, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you guys, it doesn't baffle me that it worked. Because, you know, that was my theory. Tested it out. But it was almost, I mean, it was very surreal that, and I think it was noticeable from the outside too, like, oh, you know, I haven't asked her, but literally, there was just this, this moment, as soon as she did it, she did, she only had to do the three, three counts of three, but it was after the first one. It's like, um, how do I explain this? It's like, you could tell, I could tell that I was instantly back in the present. I took a deep breath and I was just like, like this sort of gasp of breath, and I was suddenly here, and I was suddenly alert, you know, and looking around, and I started stimming again, and, uh, it was instant, instantly, catatonia, the catatonic episode was done. It took me a minute to get movement back. I had to sort of stim a bit, you know, look around, do my grounding thing, looking at all the colors, bring my senses, the rest of my senses back in, um, in a sense. Ha! And um, so it took me a minute, and I was shaking pretty bad right after, which is normal, but, you know, it wasn't even five minutes, and I was completely okay, completely okay. And that is something that has never, ever happened to me. It was very... Wow. <laughs> it, was, it was surreal, you guys. Um, and it's extremely exciting and overwhelming 
to have had that theory and to watch it. I mean, I just, I'm so, I'm sorry guys, I just keep like, this is the first time I've like said this stuff out loud, it's so. <laughs> I'm speechless. I am speechless and flabbergasted at how powerful and effective that was. Holy crap. <laughs> so, I wanna share that with you guys because it's just awesome. But also to offer that technique to the internet. Um, I think that it could be useful for dissociative episodes, for shutdowns, autistic shutdowns, and for autistic catatonia episodes. Um, you know, every person is different. Um, you know, if, if, if it touch and sight and sound aren't the senses that are going to bring you or your, your, your loved one back to the present, you know, use what is. Um, and I, you know, I don't know. Um, but obviously touch and sound are my most sensitive and therefore most powerful as far as getting regulated. Um, but it's just as simple as, as picking as many of the senses that you can and engaging them from one source. Um, I think if, 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 if your, your loved one, your child, whatever, or you, one of your strongest senses is vestibular input, rocking or swinging, and they can't have touch, um, you know, have a swing, you know, kind of swing in the backyard, whatever that they use, um, you can go and they'll sit on the swing and you can push them from the front so they can see you, they can see your hands touch the swing and count when you push them or, 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 or say, oh, guys, you have to be so happy. Oh, come back, you. Can you see him? Whatever. I hope you guys saw him. I don't want him to steal the show, though. Not yet. Anyway, so, you know, if you can do the swing, you from in front of them, um, so you either can count when you push them, or another thing that would work is you say like back, and then say forth when they're coming back to you, and you, you push and you say back and forth. So it's like you're engaging the, you know, their vestibular. You're engaging their audio. You're, you're taking as many senses as you can, uh, and engaging them from one source. And that's just another example. I came up off the top of my head. Hey, dude, come here. Don't bite my headphones. Come here. I just dropped my phone, I don't care. Look! Look! This is the puppy. Anyway, so I feel I feel kinda mean ending the video right when this adorable puppy is up here. But um that's that. Um and oh, are you ready to go down, dude? Okay. Okay. Don't come on. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, that was a workout. <laughs> So that's all I've got for you guys today. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff I want to do videos on, so I'm about to pick it back up again. And, uh, yeah. Uh, stay classy, stim freely, and I will catch you next time.